Okay, we're back and it's the next day and uh, I figured we'd just jump right into it. Um, we've got the turbos hanging like you saw in the last video and the wastegates are on. So, like today we're just starting to plumb up all the stuff. And the first thing uh, that we're going to address is this uh, upper turbo flange that feeds the oil to the turbo. I'll show you uh, what we ordered and uh, what went wrong and how we're going to fix it in just a second. Okay, I'm not sure where I left off on the last clip, but what I was going to say is I've seen a bunch of comments come in from the last video and I have some thoughts. Like everybody has questions, comments, concerns, ideas, you know, ways to do all this kind of crazy rear mount turboing. And um, you guys might see us doing something that you think we should do better or maybe there's a different way to do it. But let me tell you. <clears throat> There's probably a lot of different ways to do this, and there's probably some ways that are better than the way that we're doing it, for sure. But what I'm trying to do, keep in mind, this is the first time I've done a remote mount turbo kit, so I'm still learning as I go. But the goal here, you know, like I have this shop, I have the facility, I have the resources, like if I break this motor or I break the turbos or anything happens, like I can take care of it. It's not a problem. It, it costs me a little bit of time and hardly anything. So. Like, I don't really mind taking the burden on of, like, learning and making some mistakes and uh, trying to figure out, like, what's absolutely necessary on this kit so that you guys don't have to do the same thing. So, I really like your suggestions, though, so keep putting them in the comments. There's nothing wrong with that at all because, it, you know, it gets me thinking. Many of the things that you guys mentioned I've, I've thought about already or considered doing, and then I thought, you know, like... Let's do less. Let's see like what the minimum is to just get this done. Like, do we really need to have crazy different things happen for the oil return and pressure? And like, does it matter? Like, in some situations, maybe it doesn't. Some maybe it doesn't. But like, we're, we're building a typical streetcar. So this is like something that we're just going to go drive around and cruise and have fun. And I believe that sometimes with everybody posting on the internet, because it's such a public thing, you get people that are building like full out race cars or full track cars and they're going to use their cars for different scenarios and they've had to do different things to get over certain hurdles, you know? So maybe they had to do really extreme stuff. So I'm hoping to kind of expose the difference. Like we're going to do the minimum. I mean, realistically, we wouldn't have even twin turboed this if it just didn't already have two exhaust outlets and it just kind of made sense to put two turbos. I hope you guys just take away from this build basically things that we figure out that worked or didn't work and then you can apply it to your car and then just go boost. You know, like, assuming this thing spools good, I mean there's a lot of questions about that too, Was it, is it gonna spool good? Assuming that it spools good and it's fun to drive, we'll give you like a bunch of information at the end of this of whether we think, hey, go like slightly smaller turbo or make sure your exhaust isn't bigger or hey, you know, the oil return thing that we did, that didn't work. We're gonna tell you all of it because I basically wanna get you guys to be able to do just exactly what's needed to get your car boosted and on the road and fun for the least amount of effort and money and uh, time spent possible. So bear with us and um, you know keep commenting so that I can hear all the suggestions and things that maybe maybe I didn't even think about. And uh, yeah, well, let's just see let's just see how it goes and then we'll let you know what worked and what didn't work. So we ordered these cool little kits that came with some bolts and a gasket and these flanges that feed with a dash four AN inlet. The only problem is if you look down in there, there is like almost no oil clearance. This is basically designed for a ball bearing turbo. So if you're running a ball bearing turbo, this is perfect. It restricts it down to like maybe 30,000 size hole. But if you're running a journal bearing, like we're just running some basic journal bearing turbos, uh, that's not gonna work. So if you can see on this one, we've already widened the hole back out to you know approximately the size of like a dash four line inside diameter. That way we can feed at least the right amount of oil to the turbo. So just something to note if you're ordering flanges and you've never done this before, there is obviously a difference between a ball bearing inlet flange or fitting with a restrictor built in and a non one, uh, you know, non ball bearing. So, all right, now that we get these uh, situated real quick and then I'll bolt them on the turbo and then we're gonna start making some AN lines and uh, usually, like in the last couple of videos, I mentioned that I really like doing push lock hose, but uh, Steve went ahead and ordered 
you know, a bunch of fittings and stuff that was not AN. So we basically just have to assemble like a ton of, like a ton of lines that are not like exactly ideal for, you know, time frame. Anyway, but we got a, co a cool couple tips for putting these AN lines together. We'll show you that in just a second too. Okay, so if you guys are making a bunch of AN lines, um, you'll realize really quickly your hands are going to get super tired. It's very hard to get the ends on correctly. And the smaller the line that you have, uh, the worse it is to get everything to compress correctly and go, you know, all together. So basically when you have these AN lines and you need to assemble them, uh, this is the best strategy. Obviously cut the hose off as flat as you can. Um, if you can use an abrasive cutoff wheel, that's probably the best way. Put some tape on it and cut in the middle of the tape and then you have two clean ends. Once you get the line cut straight, you can stick this on by hand. This is the, um, the end of it basically. And there's threads inside here that basically have to thread over the end here before you can assemble and put your line in. This is really hard to do. Like sometimes the little pieces try to stick out and they don't want to go in. So basically get it started and then Instead of doing what you think and clamping this in the vise and trying to twist the hose into it, clamp the hose. That's like the best advice I can give you is clamp the hose into here and then push and twist this in and it will start to go. And uh, you're really going to have super tired hands if you don't use a tool. But if you use something like basic like this, just put a wrench of the right size on it and it will just, just push and it will thread it right in. Okay, so the next thing you'll do is this is the other end of the line. A lot of times we'll apply just a little bit of WD-40. Uh, to the end of it, that way, um, you know, it'll slide into the hose correctly. So basically, let me see if it's light enough you can see in here. Probably not, but focus, focus. Oh, okay, you can see it. So at the point where you get that hose butted all the way up against the back of the threads, then, you know, you're just basically using a little loop so the fitting will go into the center of the line, and then it will be crazy strong and not leak. Okay, we just went to the store, got a few more fittings, and we were able to pull the, the lower part of the oil pan down. We're kind of going out of order, but we're trying to get everything done as fast as we can. Pulled the lower portion of the oil pan down, and we found a spot that we could access with the drill for the oil return, kind of higher up on, like as high up as we could on the the upper, you know, uh, oil pan section. So, and we kind of could get the drill in here at an angle, so we just put it right there. It's nice and tight, and we're gonna go ahead and put our line and fitting on it, put this pan back up, and it's just as, just as simple as that. Just make sure when you do this, you tap it super good, and don't mess up the tap threads, otherwise you got big problems. <laughs> okay, update. So yesterday we went ahead and um, kind of finalized more of the oil system, and, um, tightened up some of these oil lines and kind of final mounted them and we went and got uh, these isolators, hold on let me see if I can get them in camera, uh, to mount these to the body everywhere that it might need to so that way it doesn't fall or hang. Uh, we went ahead and mounted the actual oil pump. We actually got it mounted up and uh, this we switched to a push lock hose to go forward. This runs all the way up to the side of the um, the upper case half, uh, I might have shown that in an earlier clip, I'm not really sure. But anyway, basically we use some push lock hose. This is our pressure feed that comes off of the, um, you know, where the oil pressure sensor was. I think I showed that before as well, but we got that kind of all finalized and finished. The next thing I was going to show you is I bought these fun things like on the, on the internet that I've kind of always wanted to try. Uh, we have to wire up the relay for the pump. And I thought it would be kind of cool. Um, a lot of you guys are doing this at home. Maybe like you don't have like a soldering gun or anything. Basically, you can stick your two wires in these little encapsulated uh, tubes. And you heat up the center thing. And it actually melts uh, solder into the two wires. And then these little blue things, uh, they heat up and seal for weather. And then the whole thing is a heat shrink tube that kind of like goes over as a coating. So basically you can slide both your wires in there, solder them together, and it makes like a really nice clean sealed joint. So just show this because it's just so cool. 
So I went ahead and stripped back these wires and twisted them together so they're nice, nice and connected. And then you can just slide over. It's really hard with one hand, but slide over this shrink tubing and then put that solder right on your wire in the middle and then just heat it up. It's probably better to do this with a heat gun, but you know, like, this is just kind of what I got. Okay, it's probably sufficiently cooked. That would definitely come out cleaner with a, you know, like a heat gun, but um, it definitely melted the solder into the two wires and then we are completely like weather sealed. I'm way happy with those things. They were cheap. I think I spent like maybe 15 or $17 for the packet of them. And it came with like, I don't know, like 50 or so. Pretty cool. I'll give those a thumbs up. Let me go up just a hair. Yeah. That's pretty darn close. Guys, check it out. Um, we were able to like mock these up. I wonder what you guys think of it. We tried to kind of center the exhaust in the hole so in case we wanted to do some outlet tips, uh, we would have the room for the radius. But I feel like it came out pretty good. We ended up using a few of these uh, pie cuts here and a few more there and then one in the middle to make them kind of space nicely. But in my dreams, <laughs> I imagined that I could get this to work out and it, it barely fits because of how close the turbos are together. But I am extremely happy with how that worked. I just always wanted to do something kind of like that. So, All right, I think for the next thing, we're gonna take and figure out how to deal with the outlet of these wastegates. Um, we'll start fitting up some stuff and I'll show you guys what we're gonna do in a minute. Okay, it's the next day and uh, I was just gonna show you where we got to. Um, as you can see, this side of the exhaust, the wastegate dump, and the full exhaust routing is completely done. Um, the only thing that we decided we wanted to add, I was like up late thinking about this, is, you know, turbos sound really good when they just come straight out and dump. Everybody likes the sound of the turbo, but I've kind of heard it like that for like a lot of years, and I wanted to hear it sound a little different, but I thought, you know, there's not really any room in this section to add a resonator. And then it dawned on me, oh yeah, they make resonated tips. So, you know, obviously we're trying to get it done like today, so we just went to the local store and we were able to find these um, DC sport tips, uh, which are kind of cool. They were just at like the local O'Reilly. But they have the same size diameter. They're made to be clamped on, but they're still a two and a half inch inlet and they have like the little resonator stuff in there. You can see it. And uh, I think it'll give it like a little bit deeper tone and kind of change it just a little. You'll still hear the turbo, but I'm hoping it makes it sound a little bit nicer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and chop this off shorter and delete the part where it bolts on. And then add this to the end there. And I think it will finish off the look of this exhaust, you know, like pretty nice. Okay, just to show you what I was talking about, check this out right here. I went ahead and cut off this uh, end, you know, the little bolt on ends. And if you cut it just to the right length, it just slips on super nice. I think it kind of finishes out the exhaust, you know, it just looks good. Like maybe it was, you know, supposed to be there. It might be cool if the pump turns off. It'll, it'll look like we know what we're doing. Does it? Oh, oh snap! Okay, come on. on, look, you're smiling. Okay, yeah, it was yeah, slightly yeah. cooler than you thought. Well, I mean... Oil pump works. Fantastic. <laughs> It, it actually like sounds good too, versus before when we, were, when we were hitting it with like two amps. Yeah, enough amperage helps for sure. Yeah, that pump's gonna just get that oil right out those turbos. Anyway, we wired up the pump and uh, we're kind of ready to test it. The turbos are all on, but we do not have any of the intake piping on yet. So the exhaust is already done all the way to the turbo. Wastegates are on and the exhaust outlet and the tips are done. If you come back here, you can kind of see. And uh, these, these tips came out like I think pretty good. So basically now we're just gonna, we put oil in it after doing the oil pan yesterday. 
and we're going to try to fire it up and see how well the oil travels through the system. This is like one of the things we have the most amount of questions about is like how well the oil pressure will go to the turbos and like how well it will return it back to the pan. So we'll have to just see if it just works the way it is. Ready? Oh my gosh, I'm so ready. I'm so nervous. Three days of welding and fabrication ready. Okay, my battery is about to die, but I figured I'd show you guys where we got for the day. Obviously, you've seen all this stuff. Um, we we actually started and drove it around a little bit, and uh, everything seems to be work seems to be working pretty good. Yeah, I mean yeah. the oil returns, so we're not getting any oil burning in the turbos, and yeah, it seems like it'll be fine. Obviously, we haven't put it under like load and like a ton of stress or like mm -hmm. actual boost yet, so. Um, well, I mean, we got we got charge pipes happening. Yeah, we got some that, that portion kind of, of the charge pipe started to fit up. Yeah, we got like kind of our Y piece. We're Here's going up, up over there from the one turbo. Attaches. I mean. Yeah, we're making like huge progress. So I would say, as of right now, we only had one small downside. It was how loud your actual oh, pump was. Oh, the pump was so loud. Yes. So we have like this really generic pump here it works really really well like it seems to move like a ton of it volume of oil. and it's self primed so it definitely was pulling the oil out as fast as it could go you can run it dry without having to worry yeah and it wired up pretty easily we added our relay as i showed you earlier but the only thing is it's so loud like you can't hear it when you, after you rev the motor but right at idle it, that's all you can hear yeah it's pretty, but it's pretty rowdy we get a quiet pump on the way yeah we heard another one just so that we don't have to hear that one because it's kind of loud. It actually, there's like a comparison on YouTube, this exact pump versus the new quiet pump, and it's beautiful. Substantially better. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of like how loud it is. It sounds tough. Well, that's, but, that's because you like race car things. Yeah, so it's, more, like... it's more like a race car, so I definitely like wouldn't be scared to buy this again. Like I would put this on Here, my own you car. Can just, you can just have that one. How oh, that? oh, thanks. I'm so <laughs> glad that I can have that. All right, well, um, I might throw a few other random clips in here, but if not, um, I guess we'll just sign off for today.